G'day and welcome to Aussie Vision. My name's Liv. We're joined here today with Emma, Hugo and Teddy and we're going to be talking mm-hmm. about the grand final, which is just tomorrow morning for us here in Australia. We're going to be talking about who do we think's got a good running order, who do you think's maybe going to struggle a bit, uh, predictions for the top five, who do we think's going to win, who do we think might come last and uh, all importantly, how do we think Sheldon might do? All right, so let's get started. First of all, who do we think is gonna gonna have some help in the running order here, Emma? What are you thinking? Um, I actually I'm gonna say Czech Republic because this was a fantastic um, closer to semi final too. It just absolutely went off. You could see everyone in the arena just having an absolute party with it, and it came across really well on the TV. Um, so often songs that get put into the first slot, you know. People worry that they may be forgotten, but I think this will just have a lot of dramatic impact and people are going to remember it. So I think it's actually worked out really well for them. Totally agree with that. It really jumped out at the jury show this morning and it was a great opener. Uh, You got any thoughts there, Hugo? Um, I agree with Czech Republic. I also think Moldova has a really, really good running order. Just with the way the the halves went, all the bangers seemed to end up in the first half then. The, uh, the second half, I won't say a snooze fest, but there are quite a few slow songs. So I think Moldova coming after that glut of Lithuania, Azerbaijan, Belgium, Greece uh, is probably one other I'm forgetting, but they are really going to pop off. We saw in semi-final one how how involved the crowd was with that entry. I think it's on to a really good televote score and a great running order. Yeah, I mean, the whole stadium was going ballistic this morning. It definitely seemed to work for the jury show, so it might work for them in the grand final for sure. What are you thinking, Teddy? So I agree with everything that's been said, and I'm a bit annoyed that you've taken the obvious ones. But let's talk about the fact that I think Serbia's been given the pimp slot at the end. So, you know, Fuego went second last in the running order, Zero Gravity went second last in the running order, and they've given it to the strange lady washing her hands. Now, I think that speaks with, obviously we know that they don't do it based on how people went in the semi-final, but certainly Serbia has gone from having that sort of third slot very early in the running order in the semi-final. And I think they've seen that the crowd responded really well to this and have decided to give it that sort of late stage running order where people are going to remember it and where it's going to be fresh in people's minds when they come to vote. So I think Serbia should be very happy with where they are in that. Totally agree. It, it popped really nicely this morning and I think it would have been a great show closer too, but either way, it's a good spot. Uh, I'm going to chuck in there Spain. Uh, it had a huge impact mm-hmm. this morning. The crowd went crazy. It was definitely the biggest cheer of the, of the night, um, but also just having it after Italy, which is, you know, a bit of a slower song and before the Netherlands, which is a bit of a slower song, as far as being in the first semi-final, it felt like a nice spot for it where it really could um, shine, even though it was amongst, you know, some other high-quality entries. It felt like it, it worked really well. Okay, uh, moving on to who do we think maybe maybe would have liked a different spot in that running order? What were you thinking, Hugo? I think Germany is a little bit of a victim of the, uh, of the running order a little bit. There's that really strong period of 8, 9, 10, 11 or 9, 10, 11, 12 with, with uh, Italy, Spain, Netherlands, Ukraine. And then so there's going to be a lot of televote points right there. I just think Germany just brings it down a little bit. Slower paced song, but uh, in terms of the quality as well, I just think people are going to say, oh, we've had a run of really good songs now. Here's a chance to go get a cup of tea or something like that. Um, so I, I don't think that's helped at all with the running order for Germany. Yeah, it did, it did feel like Germany needed a bit of life support and CPR this morning. I'll, I'll agree with that. Um, moving on, Emma, do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, um, totally agree with what Hugo said. And also I'm going to um, draw attention to the Netherlands. They come straight after Spain and before Ukraine. So that will be interesting to see whether that hinders or, or helps her. It may, it may help her, but also people after the excitement of Spain and knowing that Ukraine is coming next, perhaps, you know, they might switch off a little bit or, or not be as engaged with the song as otherwise they would be. All righty, Teddy, what were you thinking? So, first of all, I wouldn't have wanted to be the person who was coming up with this running order because especially in the second half, you've got tons of sort of ballads and they're all good ballads, but when you put them all in an order individually, I think they all each lose out. And so I'd like to draw attention to Greece, who's one of my favourites this year. I think we saw in the semi-final 
put her in a good spot and she really pops. And at the end of semi-final one, she made a huge impact. You saw that even on the SPS replay last night. But uh, I think we've landed her in the middle of the spots where she's coming after like Azerbaijan and Monica Liu, love her. And she's on immediately before Moldova shortly after. And by that point, I just don't think people are going to be in the mood to want to watch a like another ballad. And so I think poor old Amanda might have been a bit hamstrung by the running order. I'd also like to get your thoughts, guys, and see what you think about this. But it's interesting to me that for the third time this year, the broadcaster appears to have whacked sort of an up-tempo sort of boppy number into the second slot, which I think traditionally has gone to something a bit slower. And... It didn't really work out for Israel in that year in the semifinals. And so do you think that Romania is going to do any better? I guess, Liv, what do you reckon? <laughs> um, I got feeling as much as I love Romania is no. Um, I, I just don't think, uh, you know, strongs. second's always a hard uh, spot to be in anyway. But, um, yeah, it just doesn't, it feels like it's not in the right spot. Let's put it that way. <laughs> mm. No, yeah, for me, um, I think I I think Romania was never going to be finishing on the left hand side of the scoreboard anyway in the grand final. So I don't think, in a way, it, it has affected their chances because it's not a song that we would have expected to see at the top of the results. Perhaps if it was a, a song that was a bit more, um, you know, expected to do well, then it might have been more noticeable. But I think because it's Romania, they've sort of gotten away with it, and we we may never know whether that's affected it or not. I think in terms of the show, like the, the show proper itself, regardless of results, I, I don't mind the the first two in each of the semis and the final being upbeat. I think everyone can just sort of discount, oh, let's just put a Switzerland or a, or a someone else in slot two, which is probably what I was expecting. But I, I don't mind the show having two upbeat numbers to start because it just it just keeps the party rolling and mm. I, I, then maybe the results are just a, a corollary of that. Mm. True, true. Well, I'll, I'll put in my two cents as uh, who, who's maybe not losing, is losing a bit on this running order. I'm just going to say the whole trio of Australia, Poland, UK, UK um, they're all male. <laughs> they're all going to have great jury potential and they're all stacked in that little pocket right next to each other. This morning watching the show, it did feel a little bit uh like you'd only just recovered from the amazing vocals of one man and this bang, here's another one, bang, here's another one. And I was just like, whoa, 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 whoa. I mean, they're good running orders, like traditionally towards the end of the show, but when you put them all next to each other, I sort of question whether that's actually going to be a good thing in the end after all. But anyway, uh, moving on, we're going to talk about our top five predictions. Teddy, who do you think is making this top five? So just one country, correct, Liv? Yes. I am going to go out there and I think I'm going to say the obvious one. I think it's Ukraine. Um, I don't think this is a normal Eurovision year and I don't think we can just look at the songs in front of us and try and pretend these things are being assessed in a vacuum. People are going to, it's not about sympathy voting. People just vote on the mood of the continent at the time. And at the moment, the mood of the continent is very much behind Ukraine. And I think that the televote's going to go wild for it. I'm a subscriber to the Lib Webster theory of what happened in semi-final one. And I um, also think that the juries are probably more susceptible to this sort of thing than people would like to think as well. Like they are music professionals, but they're also, you know, people who live in Europe and people who respond to the world around them. And so I think they'll smash the televote and they'll do well enough in the jury that they're going to come very, very high indeed. Absolutely. I mean, it's just rusted on at this point. They're going to have to be right up there um, at the end of the night. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's good to see that Joel Creasy is a subscriber of my theory as well. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, did you have any ideas, Hugo? Look, again, it sounds obvious, but Sweden, I think you can pencil them in for a top five. I think I think out of, out of, probably out of the contenders, I want to say it's got the most appeal on both jury and televote. I think there are a couple of really, really strong jury songs like those three male ballads you just said earlier, Liv, but the televote's always the question. I think Sweden, we know it's radio friendly. It, you, can hear it on, you can hear it on the radio everywhere. Uh, Cornelia's got a great voice, but I do think it has televote appeal as well. I think it's got a fine running order and I think top five, yeah, I reckon it, uh, you can pencil that in. Yeah, <clears throat> definitely feeling that myself. Uh, what are you thinking, Emma? 
Yeah, I'm going to mention the United Kingdom. I think this is, um, I'm going to slightly disagree with Hugo. I think this possibly could get um, just as much jury vote and televote together. Um, a really strong vocal, a very visually appealing package. And there's a bit of a wow moment in there for those that haven't seen the performance that I think just gives it that little bit of an extra lift that Sweden doesn't have. And I think people, you know, a lot of people vote by what um, they're impacted by as they're watching the show live. And I think that's just got that little extra something that will make people go, wow, you know, and swing a few votes his way. So I think United Kingdom is definitely in with a, with a big chance. And also the song is, is also very radio friendly. It's, it's a song that I could see doing very well in charts around the world. Excellent. Just to pop in there, if you if you'll let me for a moment, yeah. um, Sam Ryder has put something out on TikTok, you know, being like, "Please vote for me, support me." It's got ten million views on TikTok. That's enormous. Wow. Like, mm. I think this could do much better than people were expecting with the televote. Sorry, Liv. Absolutely, no worries. Yeah, you know, you can't underestimate his fan base on um, TikTok. It's bananas, massive. Uh, I'm going to throw into the mix Spain. I think uh, she has put in so much. This does feel like a bit of a fuego moment where things just rose, 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 rose once we saw the rehearsals. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, if she just gets in that top three of the televote and then something half decent with the jury, you know, you can, you can land yourself in that top five as well. All right. So moving on to perhaps who we think could make the top five but maybe not quite as likely, um, who do you have in mind, Emma? Okay, look, a couple that I've got on my radar are, um, well, I've probably got four, Poland, Serbia, Greece and Norway are my four that sort of sit below the top five that could slip in, in my opinion. Um, Poland, again, would do really well, I think, with both the jury and the televote and a very visually appealing stage performance. I think that's really going to um, appeal to a lot of people. Serbia, we've seen just how popular that is. It's, you know, it's going viral. The arena crowd are getting into it. Everyone's getting into it. I think that's really got a good chance of surprising us. And then you've got big jury favourites on Greece and big televote mm -hmm. favourites on Norway, both really um, professional slick productions. So I think they're the next tier of songs where any one of those four could slip into the top five. Excellent. Um, what are you thinking, Hugo? Um, Italy, I think. I probably stole yours, Liv, but I think Italy could sneak in. I think this is the most jury-friendly Italian song we've had in, in a couple of years at least. Um, and, I mean, Mumbled and Black, they've absolutely smashed it on Spotify. So sort of like the Sam Ryder TikTok thing, they're so popular, just how will that translate to votes? I'm just not sure. But if they can bring it on the night and the rehearsals haven't been exactly what the fans have wanted but it's a chemistry on the night i will mention france as well i don't think it's going to come top five but it would be remiss to to not mention them at all i think coming before norway potentially doesn't help it but i still think it could do well with the televote and um and we saw shum from ukraine do okay with the jury last year not enough to put it into the contention to win but it still came i think maybe seventh or eighth with the jury, so I, I wouldn't count it out if they can get the performance right on the night. Yep, and yourself, Teddy? So I think a lot of the ones that have covered I agree with, but I'm going to give my theory of the case here. I think last year we saw that there were many, many, like, female bops in the final, and I think a lot of them didn't benefit from them all being there and sort of ended up in the teens, even if they were sort of predicted to do quite well. I think this year the number of sort of, like, ethereal sort of indie female-led ballad tracks or also big male vocals, I think they're all probably going to not benefit from each other being there quite as much. And I think there's space for a couple of maybe more unexpected up-tempo numbers to just jump up there so in that note like sort of vein i'm going to suggest moldova which has been absolutely tearing up the audiences in italy from what i can tell and which seems to be broadly popular with people at home as well and perhaps a more unexpected one i think czech republic could do better than expected they're on early of course but they've got a very impressive staging it really gets the vibe going at home and i could see it being a sort of unexpected maybe flying under the radar um favorite which then just comes out in the scoring at the end Excellent. Yeah, no, can definitely see something like that happening. It'll be interesting to see how it goes. Um, my my wild cards are definitely Italy, Norway, and Serbia. 
um, for all the reasons that you guys have stated. The jury show this morning, Mahmoud and Blanco absolutely turned it on. There's the chemistry. It's back. It's a totally different performance to what we saw in the rehearsals. And they, they did a really smashing job. Their outfits are just like perfect. Loved it. Um, so I wouldn't worry too much about Italy compared to what we saw earlier in the piece. All right, moving on. Uh, quick fire round. Hugo, who's winning? Sweden. Emma. United Kingdom. Teddy. Ukraine. Ukraine. I'm with Ukraine. So I got two, I two to four. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. Moving on to perhaps the right hand side of the scoreboard, the southern right hand side of the scoreboard. Um, who do we think? might be struggling here who do we think might be at the very bottom of the table teddy what do you feel so i think i'm probably the only one here who feels this way but i think this is going to be the first year since 2013 where the person who comes last is not a pre-qualified country yes i know what you're all thinking germany but i do not think that germany will come last i think that it looks authentic enough and it feels different a lot of my friends who are outside the bubble who have watched this have commented that it just genuinely feels unlike anything else that's in the running order in the final this year um and i think there's scope for it to pick up a few jury points i'm not talking a lot germany is not winning eurovision but i think there's enough for it to get a couple of jury points push it off that bottom slot and maybe into about 20th or 21st on the other hand i think we have a few random qualifiers here who have managed to slip through and i think one of those be better placed to um, land out at the bottom. My pick is probably Belgium because I don't know who's going to vote for it at the end of the day. Solid. Hugo, what are you feeling? Uh, you stole mine. I was going to say Belgium as well. Uh, Lithuania, I think, presu presumably, uh, or however it got to the final, whether it got through on jury and televote, I just think there are bigger and better songs for, for the jury. There are bigger and better songs for the televote. And, yeah, I just think it falls in that sort of mid, middle of the running order with all those uh, other ballads around them. Like we spoke about, I just think it, it just could get lost. So I think I, I'm not predicting anything spectacular for Lithuania. Yeah, it's certainly a hard song to put your finger on, right? Um, Emma, what are you feeling? Unfortunately, I am going to say Germany. I think this is going to finish dead last. Um, nothing against the performance. I just think it's come straight after Ukraine. Um, it's sort of the beginning of this little slow patch of, of the um, night's proceedings. And I just, I don't see this getting enough love from either the jury or televote to earn a lot of points, if any. And so I'm sorry, I'm nominating Germany to take last place. <laughs> Interesting. Well, it seems like we all have different ideas then in the end. Uh, I'm pinning Romania to come last in the grand final. Are you best, Krumania? I love you guys. But um, I just feel like being second in the running order, and with this entry, there were just probably other markets that people could look at and it's not particularly jury friendly. So um, I think Romania might come last. Okay, moving on to uh, golden boy Sheldon. Um, we're going to have a little prediction of where he might finish in this final. Um, Teddy, where do you think he might land? So I think he will do perhaps a little better than expected in the Euro jury, which is often one of the best sort of prediction tools for working out why the juries might vote. He did considerably better than Poland and Azerbaijan. And therefore I think he could a place to do reasonably well out of that sort of little group of three and maybe land around 10th to 12th. Um, Emma? I see him finishing just outside the top 10. I think he'll definitely be on the left-hand side of the scoreboard, but I'm sort of seeing maybe... 11th to 13th. Lo love to see him do higher, but I, I think that might be where he lands, just based on the quality of, of the other songs in the competition. All right. And Hugo? Top five of the jury. I think out of those little, that little pocket of three, I think he has the best vote for me moment. I think, again, without, I haven't seen the UK full performance. I've tried to not. Um, I think he's got a vote for me moment if he can get the mic stand working. Um, televote not a 10th to 15th with the televote, I think. So I reckon overall 5th to 13th in that, in that range, I think. Nice. So all pretty positive. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play it conservative because, you know, it, if you bring the bar down a bit, if it's succeeded in any way, shape or form, it just 
feels amazing, <laughs> right? So I always like to get my heart my heart rate down a bit on grandfather night. So I'm going to say 20th to 15th, but, you know, it's a conservative pitch here and that's with the concerns about the running order with uh, Australia, Poland, U UK. All right. Well, thank you very much for tuning in. If you agree with us, have a little chat in the comments. Or if you don't, I want to find out what do you think about the grand final and how things are going to go. Thank you so much to my wonderful crew here of Emma, Hugo and Teddy. And I hope you have a great time at the grand final tomorrow or tonight. If you See ya. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.